little walk from the river bar. And this is what you're into. Carpet, seas of clover. Tallest trees on the planet. Some of these things get like 20 feet or more at the base, which is pretty good. This one, I don't know, maybe 10 feet diameter, but it's just something to see all this clover, just like a carpet of green. And this is the middle of summertime, so late August. It's like it's own little micro. Tons of little rabbit trails around here. I guess they're people trails, but yeah, pretty big. Got that sea of clover. So neat. Quiet it is. Say I highly recommend anyone to come visit this place. So beautiful. Check that out. Got a huckleberry brush, huckleberry bush growing out of that stump. Isn't that neat? Those are delicious berries, by the way. Look at that. An albino redwood. Just a handful of these out here on the west coast. They're not actually the entire tree, but these suckers that grow off of the main like parent tree, but no chlorophyll, completely white. Something. Yep, pretty neat. Pretty rare too. Another little landing spot here in the redwoods. We're gonna go take a walk, see what we can find. See this, but all these willows have these big bees called bald face hornets. They can get real pissy. And it's just covered. It must be hunting caterpillars or something. I went to walk through it and I was like, what the heck is that noise? Bunch of hornets. Let's make sure they don't have a nest because that would ruin your day. These trails they have all over the state park are just awesome. They run for just dozens and dozens of miles along rivers and creeks and stuff. And see some of the trees here, fire scarred. So back in the day, when I first uh, got out of high school, I got a job with uh, the fire department, you know, paid professionally to work and all that. Well, this, uh, this fire that was here in the park was one of the very first big project fires I was on. I ended up getting so tired on that fire one day, worked like, I don't know, a 36 hour shift straight with like maybe 20 minutes of sleep. I was thinking how funny it is when you're so tired that you fall asleep while eating a sandwich and it falls out on your chest in this disgusting blob. Yeah, that's when you know you're tired. Yeah, you can see all the burn scars on the trees. I think this fire was back in 03. And it's taken this clover, you see all that the clover down there it takes it many years to to cover the forest floor again like it was in that last place i landed but that place hasn't burned in at least my lifetime but yeah pretty cool 
There's another big guy. Man, the tree's huge. There's a bear den right there. Well, not really, but big hollowed out tree. Now one uh, really cool thing about like uh, the fire department, especially like CAL FIRE, the inmate firefighters, in the winter time, when they have like projects, there's not a lot of fires going on, they'll come out and they'll build these bridges across these ravines so people can enjoy these trails. And they'll use like all the, uh, the cross members right here, our split rail redwood from like where the trees fall across the trail like that. They'll chop it out of there and they'll make the, uh, the split rail and build these bridges completely out of stuff that either crosses the trail or stuff they have like falls in the road. They'll mill it up at like headquarters and then they'll haul it out here just on their backs or wheelbarrows or whatever. And they'll build these things in the winter time or maintain them so they stay safe. That's a really cool thing that they do, project that benefits everybody. And plus in the summertime, those guys end up working their butt off on fires and unfortunately they got their hands full at the moment. So we'll definitely wish them best. Enjoy their hard work. One other thing I forgot to mention about the redwoods is out on that river bar, it's about 90, 95 degrees. But down here in the redwoods, I don't know, maybe 70, 72 tops. So it's way cooler when you get underneath the canopy of these things versus out there in the direct sun. And here's a new berry. I do not know what it is. Interesting. I've never noticed these before. I don't know what kind of plant or bush that is, but there's a big old bunch of pink berries. Looks like they turn red when they get ripe. I don't think we're gonna eat any. But if anyone does know what this, what kind of bush this is, that would still just be nice to know. I know mean, I'm pretty sure they're poisonous, but it's still cool to know either way. So feel free to comment, let me know what you think. Here's something neat. So you know those hornets I showed you earlier? This is one of their uh, baby start out nests. They make this paper substance. I don't know, it's like saliva and something they produce and wood fibers. I have no idea. It's really neat, but if you see this, this is a small nest that must either, or it could be a big one that flaked off and fell down, but that's what that is. It's pretty neat. Here's a useful bit of information for anybody that doesn't know. This plant right here, you see how they look like little oak leaves? This is what they call poisoned oak. So you do not want to mistake this for a maple leaf or an oak leaf and uh, do your business out in the woods if you have no mountain money, because you will be hating life for about a week and a half. Anyway, this is just one type of variety. This is like, the, I don't like, I would consider the mellower type. There's another kind that grows around here that's super shiny, like just sheens with just nastiness, if you will. Anyway, poison oak, do not touch or you're gonna get a bad rash. Some lucky people, they don't get it, but most do. This is all poison oak. This plant right here, I know is a, so it's called Salal. They call it a Salal berry, and obviously we're too late this year. They've already uh, bloomed. But uh, I guess supposedly these berries are edible. They look like a, like a nightshade though. So you definitely want to familiarize yourself with uh, nightshade and Salal because you could uh, ruin your day again. And this likes to grow in close conjunction with poisoned oak. This here is a wild hazelnut. So you know like the hazelnut flavored coffee creamer or you get those little hazelnuts at the store? These are wild hazelnuts. Now not every plant, like this one didn't make any seeds this year. If it did, it already dropped and they're probably small, but these, these bushes get really big. This is just a baby one right here. So it's probably gonna be another two, eight, 10 years before this thing gets big enough to make little nuts. But, yep wild hazelnut and this bush right here these are uh i've always called them uh, salmon berries but they're not salmon berries salmon berry looks like a looks like a wild raspberry that's uh can be orange or red these things when they make berries are are red they kind of look like a salmon berry but they're uh softer so i think they may be thimble berries i looked it up once i can't remember off the top of my head what they are but they're pretty good to eat too they're not quite as sweet as like you know, blackberries or salmon berries, but you can still eat them nonetheless. But again, 
don't take my word for it. Get yourself a book or someone in person to show you, but this is already past its uh, blooming time. It's just, I want to show you that's what the, uh, the plant looks like. Crikey, look at that. It's one of those rare fish hawks. Let's be quiet, we'll sneak up, see if we can get a closer look. I don't know if you can see it. Look at all those little fish out there. That's pretty neat. Unfortunately, they're an uh, invasive type of, type of fish. They're not the native uh, steelhead salmon that we used to be in this river. They're uh, called Sacramento pike minnow, and they can get absolutely huge. And they're a voracious predator of like this baby steelhead and salmon. I mean, I've seen them like a two foot long pike minnow chase like four or five little steelhead right out onto the shore. And they'll sit there and flop around and feel bad for them. She kind of knock them back into the water and they'll just hang right, you know, in the shallows. And as soon as they get out a little deeper, those big old fish will make another run at it and they'll either grab them or make them run out again and the birds get them. So it's, it's pretty bad. There's not a lot of steelhead salmon left in this river, unfortunately, because of the pike minnow and other reasons, you know, drought, people using more water than they need. But there still are some holdovers that stay alive in the creeks throughout the year, and then they run up and do their business every year, which is awesome. But it's not like it used to be. It's just completely overrun with these little pike minnow. So if there's any little baby steelhead in the river in the summertime, they stand a very, very small chance of surviving. The only reason they do is because they hang out in the creeks all summer, and then in the wintertime when they get flushed out, they can make it to the ocean without getting eaten. But... All right, let's uh, fire this bad boy up and we'll uh, onward and upward. Mm -hmm. 